Okay, okay, so people who are not watching on YouTube, my, my jaw, I'm slack jawed. I'm fascinated. I'm intrigued. The I best don't... part is when we were designing the can and I'm like, well, let's put the people on the can. And they're like, what? And I'm like, you know, like, let's just make it look like social media. Why not? They verified the ingredients. Let's verify them on the can. That is, you put social media on a can. Yeah, the can's a new Instagram. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> you're talking to a girl that was in New York for two decades. I'm like, where, what, what's going on with energy drinks? So. Okay, wait, I have so much to unpack here. Girl, I'm a storyteller through and through, and I've heard two big movements that I like, I want to go back and like, if I'm in the shoes of the audience, when you talked about, I went from bras to beverage. Yes. When I looked at like bra buying was a chore, I wanted to change that story. Yes. Okay. So can we talk a little bit about Lively? Like, you know, you have this idea and then you end up doing something really incredible. Yeah. So let's just tap there for a couple seconds. I really sure. want to focus, focus on. Yeah. Okay, great. Lively came about because I loved my job. I was that girl that was like skipping to work in New York City, smiling on the subway, just loved working for Victoria's Secret, had 40% market share of $13 billion. However, I didn't love wearing the product because I didn't feel like Candace Swap now and no. the other supermodels. It felt like a disconnect. So put that to one side. The other side was I looked at my mentors at work and my bosses, my female leaders who I adored. And I knew I was successfully working my way towards that seat. Mm. However, the lifestyle didn't match. They weren't home with their families. They weren't mm. able to spend time with their loved ones. And I'm like, oh my goodness, there's gotta be another way. Turns out there wasn't, so I had to create one. And I always say like, I crossed 14th street. I went downtown. I worked for a startup for three years, Thrillist Media Group. And I realized, wait, I can learn this. I can figure this out. I can start my own. And that's where Lively was born with the idea. Incredible. <laughs> Victoria's Secret with your agency work. And that sparks, uh, I see a gap. I think I can do it my own way. I think I could chart my own course. Yeah. Okay. So you have this idea. And then do you get funded? So the world is magical. When you put something mm. in your mind and you just start to like manifest it and see it, the universe delivers is what I believe. And I met the largest manufacturing um, company and family behind Intimates uh, in the industry for national global retailers. They were looking to create startups within the space. I met the guy that is the CEO. How, did, the you, how did that happen? Connections, networking. I was at a dinner with friends and they were like, oh, you got to meet so-and-so. And you know, you just have to wow. share with the world what you're looking for. You never know. Incredible. He was looking to create the next Warby Parker of lingerie. I was looking to create something on my own that was brand led and social and community driven. And magic was made in the summer of 2015. Incredible. Yeah. And then you end up selling. And then 2019. <laughs> Four years later. Four years later. Talk literally the same that. building that we had our first meeting. Our acquirer asked to meet with us and it was not a yes right away. I'm like, wait, I'm not here to sell a company. I'm still building it. Right. And then we met them. And again, I'm like, this is all signals. This is the right thing for us. It was a very serendipitous outcome. And the brand lives on. That is incredible. Now the in-between was hard. <laughs> well, the, yeah, the that. four years, the four years of that. And now yes. I, we're going to talk about that, but I kind of wanted to set the audience up because I need them to understand like where you were. You just exited a really successful business, yeah. you got acquired for a really successful sum of money. And you're at this point and juncture. And so when we talk about, and then you said, and then I got to Miami and I'm like, okay, but let's go back to the girl who was skipping to work. Yeah. Then she starts, gets involved with the agency, then says, okay, I can do this. And right. then gets these opportunities. And then four years later, you're an entirely different person with an entirely different skill set, but also a lot of financial wherewithal. Yeah. yeah. So most people at that point in time, they'd be like, great. I'm going to vacation. And you say, great. From leaving Lively to starting Gorgie, how long was that? 2019 is when we sold. I didn't leave until 2022. I just okay. loved the company and the team great. so much. Okay. And then once I stepped down, Lively was born two months later. I mean, Gorgie was born two months oh. later. Literally stepped down in you know the summer and Gorgie as an idea formed Labor Day weekend. And okay, talk to me about that. How did that idea? Yeah. So, you know, when you, uh, the, the story of founders, you know, having their company acquired is so serendipitous on paper, right? It's such yes. a beautiful story. <laughs> mentally. Okay. We're here for the tea. It's like tough. seriously, to help us, help it, us. Mentally, see it. it's really tough. It's, it's a heartbreaking experience because something that you yep. birthed, you created from within, you know, almost like a child, obviously quite different 
you have to let go and let someone else now nourish, take care of, create the persona. So I, I grieved a lot after mm. the sale of that, you know, the sale of that company. My husband always jokes, he's like, you've never cried over me like that, you know, but. <laughs> but baby, you're still here. Right. Like, I, there's no reason to good. cry. <laughs> I did mentally go through advising, investing, boards, consulting, all of these different things. None of that gave me the high of building and seeing an mm. idea that felt impossible in my mind and now walking down the streets of New York City. That's what I love to live, to breathe and create, creating more C-suites, uh, seats for women, like showing women that you can have a dual household. But the, the initial high of seeing something on my iPhone to a piece of paper, to a board, to the streets is like, wow. Hmm. I just entered another billion dollar category. And I knew at the age of, you know, the summer of 2022, I was 42 years old. I had one more in me, maybe two. And so I had three companies building behind my desk and Gorgie was the one that the world loved. Okay, so before we get into the understanding and unpacking of how you knew the world loved it, um, you said you were in Miami and the idea happened over Memorial Day weekend. Were you vacationing? Were you looking for a home? What was that? What was like? Because I, I always yeah. like to understand the, the mindset and where you were as an entrepreneur to yeah. actually be open to receiving the new ideas. Of course. So, um, you know, we actually moved to Boca Raton okay. in January of 2022. And, you know, taking your kids to a new school as a family, just kind of observing and taking in your mm -hmm. surroundings. That's when I noticed drinks in teachers' hands, drinks in all of the workers wherever we were going, drinks in all the influencers and the fitness girls. I'm like, wow, these mm. people all are holding a can, but the can doesn't connect with them. That's so odd. Like, no, talk to me, like, how do you know when something is connecting with them or not? Like, I'm trying to get yeah. into your eyes. They're not posting it. They're posting oh, their lip gloss. so good. They're posting okay. their food. They're posting their car. They're posting their shoe. They're not posting this can. Interesting. <laughs> okay. So you see the cans. They're not connecting. Yeah. And then, then. And then. I say, you know, the product that I was working on, the idea of wellness clicks when I go to Whole Foods to buy one that was trending on TikTok and social media. This is the better for you energy drink. I'm like, oh my gosh, there is one. Maybe I'll go try it. And when I went to the store, they're like, we can't sell it. I'm like, why? It doesn't meet our health criteria. And it was like, oh, energy meets wellness. Like there it is. So first thing you do, you put that on TikTok, right? And we got 100,000 likes in two weeks. What exactly did you put on TikTok? Like describe it. We had it nothing. We had literally like a liquid from a glass bottle. We're like, what if we created energy meets wellness? Now talk to me at this point in time. Are you using your personal brand? When you say, okay, so you, went, you had mentioned earlier in the, in the show, you had said, uh, I went to my community. Yeah. So were you building your personal brand community? Or yeah. how, when you say we went yeah. to our community, yeah. it wasn't from Lively, was it? No, so, okay, so here's my community, ready? Two minute Google survey, create it on your iPhone, make it multiple choice, and then send it to two degrees of separation. It's meaning it cannot be your friends and family answering it. You send it to your friends and family for them to send it to their coworkers, their best friends, their children, their babysitters, their college friends. Interesting. And now you are getting statistical data on what people want that don't know you. <laughs> so if you and I are friends, which is we're gonna be after the show, yes. you send me this, but yeah. you're less interested in my opinion because no. I know you and I'm like, everything you do is great. Yes. You want me to send it to my friends and my family. Correct. And then, and I'm validating like, hey, can you can you do me a favor? Can you fill out this two, minutes. two minute survey? Yeah. yeah. And so complete strangers are saying, clear analytical data of yeah. what they would like. Yeah, and you get pie charts on your phone, literally. 82% wanted a ready to drink beverage. 40% wanted a food. Wow, okay. So how many people responded to the survey? That, I had about 250 within a month. And like once I get over 100, I feel yes. like I'm in a good spot. Okay, yeah. so you see that there's a clear demand and an open market for you. Yeah. And then, then you go to TikTok and you say, here's a liquid from glass pouring in a, a container into a oh, glass. Yeah, it's literally, if you see our first TikTok, it's like, who is she? Who are we? We don't know. Wanna help? Who is she? And it's just like energy meets wellness and mood boards and music and motion and fun. 
And everyone is like, oh my gosh, who is this? Who is this? We want to know. We want to know more. And you could see the likes building and building as we like kept asking. And then it transitioned into more of like a clear product. We're like, what flavor should it be? It wasn't dragon fruit. It was peach. It was watermelon. It was berry. And what uh, benefits? It wasn't BCAA. They wanted biotin, L-theanine, B6, B12. They didn't want 200 milligrams of caffeine. They wanted 150. They wanted to know that it was green tea, not coffee. They wanted to really know it wasn't erythritol and sucralose. It was REBM, pure leaf stevia. So they literally will tell us everything we need to know by asking on social media. And then of course, number two step, going out in real life. Okay. Whoa. Okay. My mind is so blown. And here's the thing. I've done, I did a lot of research on you before the show and maybe it's because I'm sitting across from you and I feel your energy, but the way that you're breaking it down so didactically, I'm sure people are hearing this and being like, this is not fancy. No. But there was, I want to clarify yeah. one thing. When you put out your first video and yeah. it's like the who is she Yeah. and you're pouring the container into the glass, um, how produced is this? Is this oh. iPhone? Is this, this studio? Is this is iPhone wow. and I had someone working for me um, as an intern slash freelancer who just became like a creative, you know, outlet. She was amazing. Great. And she helped me because she lived on TikTok. I wasn't on TikTok early. Okay. And I'm like, who knows TikTok? Two degrees of separation, a friend of a friend's like, please talk to her. The point is, is like, you don't need to know how to do what you want to do. You need to just put the blocks together on it. Here's where I'm starting. Here's what I want to know. Now, who do I know and how can I connect my resources to figure it out? I love this. I love this. That's it. I love this. So iPhone. Yeah. Somebody who knows the platform. Yeah. This is doable for any person who's watching right now. So yeah. two minute survey on Google from your phone to figure out d potential demand, taking that idea to the market by creating content that feels native to the platform, very, very true to form iPhone. So now they're telling you what flavors they want. They're telling the drinkables, they, they're telling you 150 milligrams, milligrams yeah. of caffeine and not 200. Yeah. So you get this information and what do you start doing with it? Okay. So, well, here's the best part of this story, especially for female entrepreneurs. I had a partner in crime behind the scenes. So okay. I met an amazing gentleman in February of 2022 named Jason Cohen. Okay. And he was behind Skinny Pop and Veggie Straws and Owen and Core. I mean, CPG oh. guru. And because him and I met, I had this inner confidence of like, well, it's going to be okay. I know the right questions to ask. I have someone partnering with me on how to get through. And as a female, I often say, find your male mentors and friends because Guess who has like the keys to a lot of these industries? Think about Lively. My first investor was Yossi Nasser, CEO of Gelmart. Now like one of my best friends, but he mm. like helped break me into that industry. Jason Cohen, like CPG guru, introduced me to this industry. Like don't be shy, go and find these amazing humans that are willing to take your, you know, your excitement, your your positive energy and your power and nourish it. Into what do you something think made new? them both attracted to you? Like what if you had to attribute three things, what did they see in you? Yeah. Um I would say the first time like this ignorance meets utopian vision mm -hmm. <laughs> where it's like I don't know how to do this but I'm going to get it done. Okay. Yeah. Like put one question in front of me. I'll have the answer to you within 24 hours. Got I will it. go figure it out. Okay. And I had industry know-how. I would say the second time with Jason is, you know, I shared my lively story. It's, you know, I can create something community led yeah, so good. and driven, but you have to get them to believe. And that's how you get the world to believe. Got it. Okay. So you meet Jason yeah. And you tell him, like, I have these blocks. Here's where I am. This is where I want to go. And he says, I see your vision. I agree with the gap in the market. He was there from the beginning. Like, okay. he was there as I was, like, nourishing wellness into okay. drinks, into this. And he was right by my side. And him and I both said, like, this is, this is where it's at. And I could say, from a brand perspective, this is how I see it. And if it's going to be female-led and like really break the paradigm of this industry, I, I think I know how to do this. Okay, one thing that you had said, which I, it really struck me and I'd like to poke here for a second. You had said oftentimes, not all, yeah. but oftentimes, women-led companies or 
creating products or services for women. Yeah. And you said, I am like, I am creating a female led company for all. Yeah. Talk to me about the differences, the nuances, and like, obviously Lively was more focused on female. Yeah. Um, and what's the difference here? Yeah, I think that like, you know, building a lingerie brand, it was very much, you know, by women for women, right? Okay. And, and that was pre Me Too movement, right? Mm -hmm. And so it just felt like supernatural. I was my first time being an entrepreneur. Second time around, it started out as an energy drink for women. And then I was like, why? Like, why am I creating this only for women? That's so silly. Women buy it, yes, but they put it in the fridge and my husband's drinking it. This can still be female led, but for all, mm. right? And I started to think about silly things like car companies. I'm like, okay, men create these brands, but like, we all love them. We all drive them. Most of the brands that I'm wearing were initially created by men. We all endure them. Now the ones created by women, women often gravitate towards the most, which is great. And that's perfect because they have, you know, 82% of discretionary income power. However, men should be welcomed into the conversation. We shouldn't have to cater the marketing towards them. However. When did you make that decision for Gorgie? About a month later after I launched it. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And so Gorgie's been around um, a year and some change. Yeah. Congratulations. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank that's you. incredible. She can walk. Uh, yes, 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 yes. Well, except if it was my daughter. My daughter didn't learn to walk until she was 16 months. Good for her. So, you know, she she's just, uh, yeah, yeah, she took her time. She's yeah. on her own pace. She's carving out her place in the world. Yeah. So congratulations. Now, after you had that consideration, what changed about the marketing, the branding, or did anything change? No. Okay. What we did was we became more open to sharing groups of humans, men and women. Got it. And what I also realized is men were really attracted to the concept both inside the industry and at investment banks and law firms. When you saw who was buying the product off the shelves of Whole Foods in 22 floors of you know prime investment banking firms, you're like, okay, I'm pretty sure that's men. And then you know we mm. saw golfers and athletes approaching us. We were taken to Wimbledon for tennis players to check us out. So I'm like, whoa, this is a dual gender okay. brand, okay. but it's gonna stay female led. Got <laughs> it. Okay, so when you uh, looked at how you took it to market, you did a yeah. lot of testing and analytics before. Yeah. When you were ready to say we're we're marketing it. Yeah. What was your thoughts? What was your approach? What was right. it going on in your head? So I actually did um, a TEDx talk on this, which is I build brand ba brands backwards. The idea mm. is that you build the marketing and the story with your community first, and you actually start marketing right away. Just start, what is marketing? It's telling people about an idea. It's trying to sell them on a concept, right? Sell them on the concept before it even launches, because when you do launch, all of those people are launching with you. Oh, that's so good. Right? Okay. And so we started August, 2022, when we posted that first TikTok. And then we in initially put up a splash page in December. Okay. Literally like three months later, which is come join us. Good energy for all. It literally looked like Gorgie launching soon from yacht parties to disco nights. Cause we just wanted this to be a fun brand. And we started to have people sign up on email. So uh, just before we get to the landing page, August to December, how, what's the frequency of posting on social? Pretty and was that the much. only marketing you were doing at the that time? Was it. Yeah, just okay. a, a couple times every week. Okay. And then like really leaning in and building where we saw it. You know, there was like no rhythm, no schedule. It was just like, let's just keep going. Let's just keep going. Let's keep trying. Instagram, we kept rebuilding our grid, building Pinterest boards, trying to like okay. carve out the narrative filmed videos, did some in real life happy hours. We have no can still, and we're still doing in real life happy hours, taking okay, videos, creating content. Okay, so talk to me about that because that's very unique. Yeah. Having an in-person event without the end product. No. So what did that look like? It looked like a postcard that we post that we printed at FedEx. Okay. It was like very glossy and very okay. pretty. I think I have one in there. <laughs> and stickers that said Gorgy Girls of Philly because it, it was in Philly and a glass bottle with our first samples and 20 girls in which I um, paid for a happy hour and just said, hey. How did you find the 20 girls? My mother-in-law's next door neighbor was um, finishing college and she was incredible. She was um, you know, transitioning into her life. And I said, hey, I'm building a new brand. Do you wanna be a part of it? And she goes, yes. I was like, great, let's start with the happy hour in Philly. And she interned for us. She, became, you know, like a big part of the brand launch. 
Wow. Yeah. Okay. So when, okay, when does the happy hour happen? Between that August and December? Yeah, September. Really? Yeah. So a month later, yeah. you're having, wow. Yeah. And so those 20 girls there, what were you listening to? What were you watching? What did you want to know yeah. from them? So we put on the postcard, Gorgie on the front. On the back, we said, name your flavor. And they started naming the things they were tasting. The point is, is you don't push it as like you're selling product. You're creating an environment for them to have fun and the product's just there. And then they'll pick it up and they'll drink it and they'll say things. And then they'll write things down and they'll take pictures and they'll post it. And just the way that they're like, sharing the environment and sharing the drink and the words they're using you can watch their smiles when they interact with the product you're starting to great you're starting to like see the stickiness happen or not and you got to be really honest with yourself like are they enjoying this are they connecting you're like oh my gosh they are interesting so when you debut the coming soon page yeah how many people signed up yeah. What did so it feel like? There was three of us on the team at that point. Okay. And so an intern and one full-time hire, okay. freelancers, et cetera. We all scrubbed our Gmails and send it out to every single person in our Gmails. And we were getting hundreds of people joining. So with the, the adoption rate on this could be like 1%, right? But those people are telling you and showing you what excites them. Interesting. When I did this for Lively, we got 133,000 emails in 48 hours. It was a viral moment. For Gorgie, a couple hundred every week. Okay, okay. So I wanna go back to the, the getting 133 viral moment for the subscribers, but what do you think and feel having experienced the 133 to 100? Yeah. What is, what's going on in your head? It's at first you're like, oh my gosh, it's not this one. This isn't going to work. It's not hitting the same thing. And right. then you're an entrepreneur, right? You don't see the world as problems. You see it as puzzles. You're like, wait, the Rubik's cube is going to happen in a different way this time. Which way is it happening so this good. time? Right? So good. Lively was on Instagram. Gorgie's on TikTok. Lively went viral on email in 2016. Where is Gorgie yeah. going to go viral? interesting and then i realized i'm like it's it's in the industry it's actually not on social media and i started to realize like when i go to the trade shows when i share this perspective out in the world of beverage what happens there and then that gets to the customer okay i'm done, I'm <laughs> done. I, okay i, I want to get there i want to get there but i want to backtrack because the audience is going to be like how in the world did she get 133,000 <laughs> subscribers in that amount of time what happened there okay harry's razor company okay. everybody knows yes okay 2011 they did their pre-launch campaign they got 100,000 emails in four weeks okay and then they open sourced that code and did a whole blog post on how that happened oh and i was like oh those guys got 100,000 emails let's do that and so we took their open source code. Yeah, <laughs> like we thought we, our goal was 20,000. We're okay. like, it doesn't happen twice. Like we're gonna get 5,000 a week. It's gonna be awesome. And we took their open source code and we put up a splash page and did exactly what they said, which is like, join us as we launch da, 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 and get you know points towards these free rewards, X, Y, and Z. Now, the key to Lively's going viral was we did focus groups prior to understand which were the images and the taglines that people resonated towards most. And so we would put images on a coffee table, literally like 12 women in an Airbnb with wine and cheese, different cohorts, fitness girls, moms, entrepreneurs, et cetera. And they would just post it the ones they liked with words and why. And you would get trend lines. It's like, oh my gosh, it's this girl. It's the girl on the fire escape with fur over this one bralette. That was the image. What were the words? It wasn't panties or underwear, it was undies. And it was today bras and undies, tomorrow the world. They loved hearing that. Those two things on a splash page. Oh, I got the chills. I got the chills. That made it all so good. Oh my God. Wait, can I just tell you how wild that day was? <laughs> oh my God. So the girl in the fire escape with the fur, uh, her bra. Yeah. You have your beautiful tagline. And then on the splash page, if you're following the model that Harry's had done, are you saying join us because there's future perks? Yeah. In this day. Yeah. They don't even know how much the bra cost or what it's made of or anything. They just saw that image. Today, bras and undies, tomorrow the world, earn credits towards, boom, boom, boom. Now here's how this actually went down. Scrubbed our Gmails on a Friday. 250 emails is all I had in my Gmail at that, okay. account, at that time. 
And we sent it out. We went to happy hour. And that night we got like 250 people signed up. Okay. I'm a first time entrepreneur. I'm like, is this good? I think so. We're going to get 20,000 in four weeks. The next morning we wake up, we have a thousand. By noon, it's 5,000. By 4 p.m. it's like 50,000. Okay, how, how are the how are the jumps happening? I, was there a share mechanism in that? Yes. And, and they it get was to just, the thank you page and yes. it's like share And then it. they posted it. Now, this is when Ugh. Instagram was pre-stories, but you had Facebook link and bio. People were taking their link and putting it in their link and bios and sharing it to their entire audience on Facebook. Now they were incentivized to do that because it would elevate them in the perk, perk ranking or were they just yeah. at the generosity? They're like, I like this, like That's I just right. want it. Wow. Yeah. And we had 300,000 sessions globally. Like if you looked at a Google map, it was just blue, blue, blue. Also, we were giving people free credit. So now your head goes from, yes, they're signing up to like, Oh my God. <laughs> oh my God. Are we bankrupt? Like, what did we just give away? The math works. The okay. statistics hold okay. you to like 90% hit the first and second tier. But we got to like 90,000 Saturday night and I called the developers. I'm like, this is hacked. There's no way. And they're literally in a bar, like in the bathroom stall. I'm like, no, Michelle, it's real. The servers crashed the next morning. Like couldn't Stop. handle it. Couldn't handle it. And we emailed all of them. We turned our customer service on. This is the month before we're launching Lively. We turned email, phone, everything on. I was like, I have to know why. And we would get emails from girls in Australia in a high school being like, my friend got an email back on the referral campaign. Why didn't I? And I'm like, I mean, the servers crashed, but like, why do you care? They're like, we just want to be a part of this. Oh. And that is brand stickiness, that emotional cord that I was telling you about the girl that would run to buy Calvin Klein to feel like the other people in her neighborhood. Good God. So good. Okay. So now you get that high yeah. adrenaline, dopamine, and then you flash forward four and a half, five years later yeah. when you're like, okay, well we have a hundred. Yeah. And then you say, this isn't a problem. It's a puzzle. Yes. And so then you say, I think it's happening industry. Yes. How did you get there? So I went to Expo East in September. So okay. after the happy hour, that same time I went to Expo East um, with Jason and we didn't have a lot. We had like a very early PowerPoint deck and our liquid in a glass bottle. Okay. But when you start to like sit in these hotel rooms near the trade show, you notice all of those people there are in the industry Girl, and you love the industry. Slur. Yes. And you're okay. like, hey, okay, I, I'm working on this. I'm doing this. Show them visuals, show them the social media, show them the likes, show them everything. And you see the twinkle in their eyes and you're like, oh my gosh, they, they feel it. They see it. They see this genuine opportunity. Right. And like, you just keep telling your story over and over again. And if you get that, that energy that we feel right yeah. now, like, you know, yeah. that they're excited about it. I'm like, this is definitely happening. But wait, go back. Are you at the hotel adjacent to Expo East? Yeah. And you have your glass bottle and what do you do? Pouring it into cups? It depends on who you're sitting next to, right? Sometimes you're showing them a postcard. You're showing them an Instagram post. Okay. I mean, I'm literally pouring samples sometimes on the corner of the street <laughs> in Philadelphia. <laughs> I was walking around the trade show with them in my modern picnic handbag, which is a handbag that's yes. actually a Yeti. Yes. And it was like leaking water because I had so much ice that I was like borrowing from people at the trade show to keep them cold. Oh my <laughs> You gosh. do what you got to do. Okay. After Expo East and people have twinkles in their eyes, like what are you thinking? Got Whole Foods. Whoa. Because of that? Because of, you know, being in the industry with Jason, talking to all these different people, we got the... So the first store to carry Gorgie is Whole Foods? Yes. Okay. That's kind of like, you set the bar real high. Right? Do you see the circle of what happened? The idea yeah. started in Whole Foods. We yeah. launch in Whole Foods. January 11th, Interesting. 2023, the opening of One Wall Street in New York City. We have a tent out front. We have a whole floor like floor to top wall of gorgie the ceo of Gor of whole foods comes in i'm like shaking his hand in wow. front of, in front of our cans and now that 133,000 email feeling is back yeah it is there it is interesting so you get into whole foods january 2023 at the time of this recording we are in may 2024 and 
what is trend what is transpired in in this like after this happens does your marketing change do you still feel like it's emphasized industry marketing yeah yeah because you know with lively it was a d2c brand with gorgy i was like okay wait maybe it's not d2c maybe it's retail first let's go all in on how retail. much of your current sales are comprised d2c or can you buy d2c today yeah now we're 60 40. retail to eat to Whoa. digital oh you are in the sweet spot <laughs> Lord. But we didn't even figure out digital till June of this past summer. Like I, in my brain, I'm like, oh, it's not going to work. It's not going to work. And then I'm like, hold on puzzle. Why? Okay. So what was the natural inclination of saying this is not going to work? Yeah. Having so much experience in the DDC space. We were not seeing the, we were seeing traffic, but not the conversion rates. Okay. And I'm like, wait a minute. Why is the conversion rates on Shopify just aren't what I want? They're not like even high single digits. Okay. Right. Et cetera. And so I was like, okay, put that to the side. Let's focus okay. on retail, focused on retail for six months. And then I'm like, this DDC thing's really bothering me. Let's try Amazon. Cause I start reading earnings reports of all these beverage companies doing so well. We start doing uh, Amazon May. It's like, oh, something's happening here. I see like some sparkles happening by June. It's like, oh, this is a real business. By September, it's a six figure business per month. Okay, so um, when you say we did Amazon, there's people who do Amazon and there's people who do Amazon. What yeah. approach were you following here? Like, oh, we're just testing it and then we see traction or are you saying, no, 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 we're gonna go all in. We have a strategy. We've hired somebody who specializes because yeah. it's a different, Amazon's a different world. Yeah, it's, um, it's definitely a complicated world. So we started with one agency that was wonderful to help us get into cool. the space and understand Great. the listings. And like, you really do have to have, yes. you know, if you're not an, an expert in the area, a partner or a community online that you can go to. And then we switched to a different agency where I could see like a different type of style and scaling strategy. And that like really opened it up. So just like with anything in the huh. business, if you don't love what you're seeing, tinker, tinker with your agencies, tinker your, with your partners. And then when you see that like rhythm happening, now scale, now go. Wow, okay, so how much, okay, so that's Amazon. Do you do, does Gorgie do from the site DTC? DTC? We have it available too, but mm. Amazon is, you know, our lead and it. it's so incredible to see us. We ship to every single state in America every month, every mm. month. Our repeat rates are 54% while we're growing. I am a retention based brand builder. Acquisition is one thing, but you can't scale acquisition until you know you have retention. And the so stickiness true. we have, like the lifetime values. I'm such a data geek, like Same. Live, yes. live for data. And when I look at that dashboard, I'm like, oh, this is it. People in Iowa will email us and be like, oh my gosh, we found you at Costco, then we bought you on Amazon, and now we have to have you in all of our fitness studios. Brand stickiness. I'm flooded with bachelorette invites, graduation invites, wedding invites, et cetera, because they want us at their magical moments. Hmm. Like a beverage company, they want us at their magical moments. Now that is brand stickiness leading to like beauty, right? And clothing and apparel. Interesting. Okay, before we get there, um, with Gorgie on Amazon, do they have the subscription option yes. there? Oh, how many of thousands? Them? Really? Thousands for an energy drink. I mean, this is because we've become a part of their daily life. In some cases, huh. we've replaced their afternoon coffee. In some places, we've replaced all of their coffee. In other places, we've replaced alcohol. In other places, we've converted people who don't drink caffeine at all to now drinking caffeine, members of my team. Mm. And so they've realized I feel better when I have this brand, this drink in my life, the green tea, the L-theanine. I don't go from like boo to da -da 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 to boo. I go to like just like, <laughs> I had a great night's sleep. I had a great workout. I had a great time with my loved ones. Like that feeling. <laughs> I feel like in my mind, I just saw like literally like something on TikTok. You know, you the sound effects, the yeah. sound effects. Then we got to, I feel really great in my life. Yes, we yes. don't need words here. We don't need words. Okay, this is fascinating to me. And let's talk about the health benefits. Like this, cause to me, I'm looking at the health benefits through the lens of marketing, yes. right? So you yes. notice there's a gap in the market and do you lead with the health benefits of the drink? Yeah, no, you know what? Um, I've learned this from some other D2C brands that have really thrived. Number one, we're an energy drink. 
We're not okay. sparkling water with caffeine. We're not anything okay. other than an energy drink. Great. So we want to fulfill that purpose first. Then we are with better for you ingredients. So we like to say we're an energy drink, but we taste better, look better, feel better. <laughs> and so the taste, you smile. The look, you post. The feel, you make the world a better place. And so hmm. we, we really want to get that energy, emotion, and then the why is the benefits, the L-theanine, the biotin, the B6, the B12, the green tea. So we talk about the stickiness and we talk about the brand association. I've always looked at content as a way for a consumer to let you know what they're valuing. What kind yeah. of content are you seeing that is not um, influencer paid? Yeah. What is coming up organically? What are you seeing? Yes. What are they identifying now? They literally say, oh my gosh, an energy drink I actually love. Mm. Oh my gosh, an energy drink that actually makes me feel better. Like this is the one. And like they're literally promoting for us, like in their car, at their workout, studying for finals. Like you can see like their their light has shifted when they've endured our product. Mm. And I think it's what I kind of shared earlier, which is that stereotype on a category. Bras was not the cool category to buy. We wanted to make it energy drinks have like kind of an old school stereotype against them. Not good for you, not like the prime focus of life, et cetera. But what if it was? What if it was good for you? What if it replaced Starbucks? What if it replaced like all of these like sparkly moments that you drive to endure and make happen? That's mm. us, we're there for you. And so when you look at the spectrum of energy drinks right now, what's your differentiating factor? What's Gorgie's different, differentiating factors? Yeah, I would say three things. Number one, the actual content, right? So it's green mm. tea, it's L-theanine, it's B6, it's B12, it's 150 milligrams. Like we're sports content certified, we're non-GMO project verified, we are gluten-free, zero sugar, five calories, sparkling. I love when people say we're chuggable because we don't give you that <laughs> uh, like feeling, right? Like someone said, oh my God, you're, you're chuggable, you're gulpable. I'm like, what does that mean? I'm like, oh, it's a smooth drink. Oh. And it doesn't taste like um, a candy pop. It tastes like a natural, you know, refreshment, which is different. Okay. Now that the, the business has taken shape, yeah. one years old, what will be your marketing focus from now and another 12 months? Yeah. So year one was packing the snowball tight. When you're building a brand, you have to understand who you are as a person, right? Mm -hmm. So now we know who we are. We're gorgy. We're an energy drink better tasting, better for you, better, you know, better looking, better tasting, better for you, right? We're an energy drink that makes people's lives better. Now that we know what we wanna to say, top of the funnel. Now we need to let the world know we exist because we know who we are, we see the repeat rates, where we were number one in Air One last week, we're the second fastest growing wow. energy drink in the natural channel. We're talking about retailers like, you know, Sprouts, et cetera. When people endure the product, they enjoy it. Now we just need to let people know we exist. How great is that? And what's your strategy for that? Well, I still believe- Outside of doing my podcast. Yes. You know? <laughs> Number one, meet Jasmine. <laughs> make sure she drinks the product and now- Yes, we'll make sure that I get a subscription, yes, obviously. Yes. And then, you know, really think about brands that we love. How are they built? They're built through in real life, digital, and content that makes people say, wait, hold on, I need to try that. Okay, in real life, yep. digital, digital, and content. I want to make sure that like we're listening to that. Like yes. we've wa we're, we have watched and seen somebody do this so successfully. Yeah. You are now repeating it yes. and you hedge your bets against that. Yeah. And so can we break those in the next 12 months for each one of those three things? What yep. does that look like for you? In real life. In the last 12 months, we've done over 500 different events. Uh. Have we hosted 500 events? No. Oh. Have we offered to be at events when asked or have we, you know, politely requested to have our presence there? Yes. Oh, so good. From Super Bowl to New York Fashion Week to Wimbledon to 75 college campuses to you name it, we have been there. And that's the point, right? Brands are posted when they are part of a euphoric moment. So if you're there, 
you're now part of the post. Okay, talk to me. Okay, real quick, because I'm dying here. <laughs> Let's take Wimbledon. Yeah. You, so Gorgie was there. Yeah. And what did that look like? How involved were you? What did it look like? What were people posting? Yeah, well, it started because my, my son and daughter were ball girl and boy at a tennis exhibition. And the oh, player fun. saw the pre-launch. And her team reached out to me and said, she loves the concept of this, let's learn more. And as we started to talk more, they were like, come to Wimbledon now that the product's launched. Oh my God. Okay. okay. <laughs> and so we were there just to share it, you know, with the players pre-Wimbledon, et cetera. And we had like a tower with our Gorgie in an ice luge and we're in Wimbledon. <laughs> it was bananas so this is for players for players got yeah. it yeah for, okay. for them to learn about the yes. brand and their okay. teams etc and and so we learned a lot about our brand and how we could mesh with tennis we weren't ready to you know go any further yet we were literally three months old three months and so we've been doing this in all different spaces being patient with ourselves to not okay. over sign to anything but mm. to like understand the different genres as the um, you know, personality of our brand evolves. Mm. And now- Hold on, I heard you say on an interview, I'm okay saying no and waiting for a better yes. Yes. I thought that was so powerful because I have been, for better or for worse, I'm like, I'll say yes. Because it was just get me in the room. Yeah. And I've realized over time that sometimes saying no would have been so much more powerful to wait for the better yes. Yeah. So Wimbledon for you was one of those moments. Yeah. Like yeah. This, is, this is how we're showing up now. Right. Right. Interesting. Yes. And do we want to be a part of a tennis player's life? Yes. Is it today? No, because it's going to be better later. <laughs> In what context? Like, how did you define that? Because we knew, I knew in that moment, I wouldn't know what to do in that moment with this player, right? Like we're a loud, energetic brand. Wimbledon is calm. Hmm. quiet and so we need to figure out like the right dynamic and then I started to see it it's like oh it's through styling it's through storytelling it's in their daily lives with content and creation but we had a lot of work to do on our own just in terms of building and creating clarity lively was the same thing we weren't ready to go into Nordstrom and Target right away hmm. we, we politely waited for a couple years until we were ready and it was a better yes Ooh, so good okay so these in-person events now, um, of the 500, how many were you directly involved with in the same capacity like Wimbledon? Because I think that what happens is we hear this and some people are like, I don't have time for that. Or how, what was your no, metric? You, of, sometimes you're just mailing the product. No one from your team's even there and you ask for pictures. That's got it. it. Yeah. Here's two cases of Gorgie. Here's our postcards. Here's a plastic thing to put up and like tear it. Take a picture. Also sprinkle some disco balls on it because that's fun. <laughs> <laughs> Beautiful. Okay, so then uh, we went from in person. Yeah. Then the next arm is going to be digital. Yes. Okay. Now this is the fun and sometimes hard part for people, right? You for digital, we have a two prong strategy, which is we really want to be community led, and we want, you know, humans that want to be influencers. We will treat you like an influencer, and they oh, have such powerful so megaphones. So good. Such powerful megaphones. So when, for the people who, generally speaking, want to be an influencer, um, and you treat them like such. Are they micro influencers or they're not even that at you that know, level yet? It could be both. They don't even need to be at that level. If they show that they're connected to creating content and you can see that demonstrated by their grids and how they're post, let them. That's beautiful. We did that for Lively. You know, if they had like a couple hundred followers, but their grids demonstrated that they wanted to create like a influencer, let them influence. Why not? What does that look like for you? And I mean, now you see like we have over a thousand people, you know, in and out of our Geneva community, and then people constantly posting. So here's a great statistic. 60% of our revenue on Amazon is unattributed top of the funnel organic traffic. And that is because they see you at events, they see you on micro influencers, people that you've treated like influencers, and then the actual influencers um, that are sharing the brand. Interesting. You gotta have Good all. Good Lord. You gotta have all. Wow. Yeah, which is a lot of work, right? But you have to be um, connected to the gray. Black and white statistics aren't gonna show you that this is what's driving mm -hmm. your business. The gray is the part that you have to use gut instinct to really Got go it. after. And so when you say there's a person who's not necessarily an influencer, but you're treating them like an influencer, what does that actually mean? So we'll send them product, we'll send them pictures to post or post on their own, postcards, et cetera. You have these amazing people that'll go to the stores 
create content on your behalf, post them, et cetera. Same thing for Lively, we're seeing it with Gorgie. They're growing as influencers while they're influencing for us, right? And so, you know, some of them have driven two hours for a store opening to connect and be a part of it. So I think the, the crux of everything in business is humans. It's how do you create human connection that is worth sharing? And that's all it is, is if you can spark that emotion for them to do something, say something, buy something, you had human emotion and human connection and human interaction that'll drive a purchase, drive an impression, drive conversion. So at the current state of this recording, how much of your content is UGC? And how much is it, is it more repurposing on stories? Or oh what my is gosh, it? so much of it is UGC. We have more content than we know what to do with. We have the oh, opposite oh problem. Oh gosh. We have, <laughs> I mean, wow. We okay. had our Gorgie team retreat in Boca a week or two ago. We have so much content from us. I mean, check out Get Gorgie and you will see, like our team alone is oozing with content. And then our community is oozing with content. And then we have people with, millions of followers posting us that we're learning about and building connections with. And now it goes from organic to a partnership. And that's the other key. If you're going to do something that is paid, let it start organic. Like so good. Find that. So good. Because it's so authentic and then their followers know it. They feel it. They can see that. Uh, wow. Uh, lastly, content. On that note, so we were talking about the three arm marketing approach for the, you know, next 12 months of, of Gorgie. We went from in person and 500 and you don't have to be at all of them. And as long as there's disco balls, you're ready to go. You're ready. Uh, Then we went to uh, digital and how you have created a community that is creating on your behalf and then you support it when you see it. Yes. And that fosters an amazing flywheel. And now it goes back to content. Yes. So. Content for me is back to my early days of fashion where it should feel editorial. Like we literally have a magazine that we made. Mm. And if you look actually on the back of our can, you'll see the creators. So you'll see people from building the brand, whether they're photographers, influencers, creators, et cetera. They're a part of every part of the brand. And now we love to say that the can is the new Instagram. Like you have a generation that was born on digital oh devices. Oh my gosh. So every can has different faces on it. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> and so then these people are getting these cans with content, like physical product content on their behalf. Yeah. Get out. And if you go on today, you'll see people literally just posted the last run and they're like, I'm on the can, right? I'm and how on often the are you doing a run? Sometimes every month, sometimes every quarter. Like it just depends on business, right? But. I am Why like not? my, okay, okay, so people who are not watching on YouTube, my, my jaw, <laughs> I'm slack jawed. I'm fascinated. I'm intrigued. <gasps> I'm eat, drinking this up like soup Wait, on a Wait, the spoon. best part is when we were designing the can and I'm like, well, let's put the people on the can. And they're like, what? And I'm like, you know, like, let's just make it look like social media. Why not? They verified the ingredients. Let's verify them on the can. And I drew it on a piece of paper and gave it to them. And they were like, okay, uh, yeah. Okay, Michelle. I was like, we'll have waivers, it's fine. <laughs> that is, you put social media on a can. Yeah, the can's a new Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> your brain, your brain fires so next level. Okay, and so as we close. So we, the content, let's just close yes. the content. The content should feel and look like your brand. Ours is all about fashion meets fitness meets fun and you want to influence right so we literally have a magazine here where you'll have like a beautiful spread just like what would you see in harper's bazaar or vogue and then you have actually like bylines of people converting to the good energy club and then you actually have energy like you want to share the in roller life these are people that have had our drink in a euphoric moment whether it was a i mean a gorgy paloma let's go right yeah hit it okay so if you are listening, please make sure that you hop on over to YouTube, Official Jasmine Star, because Michelle is actually showing you the physicality of her products and, and her marketing. And I, I think that I, I couldn't end this conversation by highlighting one thing that is very admirable from somebody who has a daughter watching somebody so successful build these businesses. How are you yeah. balancing the two? And I know this is like a little a, a little a side nice byline, but yeah. I feel like it's really important to, to know. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I would say that like 
the concept of balance, I, I just like don't know if that word exists. I think it's mm. the concept of every day committing to your priorities and that's my children and my husband and then my business. But I have to say that to myself every day because mm. I love building brands and businesses. My son on Mother's Day, you know how you get the card and they write all the beautiful things about their mom, how old she is, what she loves. What does your mom do when she needs to relax? Oh, she goes and works on her business for a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> on a first grade Mother's Day card, right? <laughs> like how much does mommy love to work? <laughs> Doesn't leave home without a gorgeous. So every day I am very clear on my priorities. Last night I took my daughter to a store opening for Aloe. And mm. you know, I just wanted to have that moment with her, but also share with her like why I do what I do and like let her experience it and mm. understand it. And I welcome them into all of it, right? Like, mm. were they slinging cans in the Hamptons last summer? Yes. They're like, what are we doing today? I was like, oh, we're going to X restaurant. And I'm like, you're going to grab a cooler and give everybody a can. <laughs> but invite them into your life and let them see like, oh, this is what mom does, right? Mm. Last weekend, they came to Orlando with me for a speaking event. And my son was so proud. He's like, mom, you got up on stage and spoke in front of all those people. Good for you. And Good for I you. think demonstrating the role that women have in the household now can and should be different. And my daughter at 10 constantly asks me about it. Like, you work so much, mom, is that okay? Like. She talked about Title IX. I was telling you, she yeah. did a presentation on it. Like and your daughter's 10 years old. She's 10 years old. Yes. They're understanding how society is shifting. And that is an amazing thing because now you have both genders creating beautiful things in the world. How great is that? It's not great. It's beautiful and it's stunning and it's amazing and it's so well deserved. So for people who want to get <clears throat> more information, get Gorgie.com. If they want to connect with you and or uh, Gorgie um, via social, how is that happening? Give a little shout yes, out. Yes, yes, please. Um, you know, getgorgy.com, at getgorgy, and then I'm the underscore Michelle Grant, and I'm just so thankful to be here and spreading good energy to all. Mm, good energy club. Let's go. Thank you for listening and watching the Jasmine Star Show. I specifically wanted this conversation because I see somebody who's done it well, who understands brand and marketing, and more than anything, the exact same approach that she has used to build and scale a massively successful exit and then start another massively successful endeavor, which is well on its way to have a very similar exit if we're looking at trends and statistics. I'm just speaking it into existence. And everything she did is at your fingertips. That's why this show exists, is do not put reasons or excuses between what you want and where you wanna be. What Michelle did is supplanted any excuse with this blocks and said, I don't know how, but I have the capacity to find people who will help me get there. And that is the main takeaway of this show. Thank you for listening and watching the Jasmine Star Show. It is always an honor and a pleasure.